we've been using PVC board in the boat and one area that we need to work on is around the companionway and that is actually plywood right now that we need to cover with PVC board. So we needed to find a good adhesive that we could use to bind plywood and PVC board. So we went to Home Depot and we found this DAP DynaGrip Heavy Duty and we tested it out last night and so far it's looking pretty good. Supposedly it has a cure time of like two days. That's one concern, but it was supposed to be skin dry in 15 minutes, I think. It was also supposed to have instant grab. So. Yeah, and it did grab pretty well right away. We didn't really pay attention to the 15 minutes. We just left it overnight. And I would say it's pretty well bonded. I think when I bend it though, ooh. That's, but I mean, when is this going to bend like that around the companion way? And it wasn't the full cure time, so. I mean, I couldn't pull it off initially. It was just once I bent the actual PVC board. It's gonna have a few screws in it anyway, so I feel like this is probably gonna be okay. enough. Yeah. So I think the reason why this actually gave way was that it wasn't completely cured because if you look at this, I can actually move the adhesive around and it's not dry in the middle right there, so. It even actually did bond really well though because some of the wood, especially here, was left behind. Our biggest thing was trying to find something that would bond to PVC and this looks like it has bonded to the PVC where it's cured. Yeah, and same bonded on the wood as well. So, yeah. so it kind of equally came off the, the wood and the PVC. So my bad, my memory failed me. The cure time is actually seven days, so we really didn't give this a fair shot. We gave it 12 hours, <laughs> yeah. but I think with just a 12 hour test, I think it's pretty clear that it actually did bond to the PVC. And yeah. given the full seven day cure time, I think it'll be okay. And this is also for outdoor use as well. So we were out here tracing templates and all of a sudden we heard our AC go out and then a loud popping noise. A uh, bang. And what was that? They hit the uh, power line over there with a backhoe. So the power line's down and we're out of power, but uh, one of our neighbors has a generator, so we're probably going to end up using that later if the power is still not out so that we could, you know, still run some power tools and get what we need to get done done. But for now, it's kind of time for lunch, and we're just going to finish tracing this stuff out. Uh, this is going to be for the size of the companionway and up forward uh, above the V-berth, so that's going to complete all the PVC board that we're going to put in the boat. But we're going to go to lunch, and then later on, I'm going to cut this out using either the generator or hopefully the power is back. All right, after about four or five hours, we have power back at the yard. We were actually pretty productive though. Um, we went and picked up our full face masks and full face respirators um, from the post office. And we also sourced counters, we think. So hopefully you'll be seeing that soon. Now that we have power back, we can get back to cutting these PVC boards. So we've cut out the templates and we've dry fit them on the boat and now it is time to use some of the adhesive and some screws to make sure that they are permanently in place. So as you can see, looking a lot cleaner in here now and then we got the new nav station dry fitted we still need to put the screws and yeah. fiberglass and everything in but over. it's all set that's what it's gonna look like I want to stress that what's behind me right now is still very rough it's got a lot of prettying up to do and also remember these stairs they're still just temporary even though they're still there probably like six months ago when I said I was gonna put these stairs on temporarily but no, we do have new stairs in the plans. We also have a new countertop in the plans and we're gonna be finishing this up really, really nice. And I, I can't wait to do it because it's gonna feel less like we're living in a construction zone and more like we're living in a home, so. And we're gonna finally prove that we are not just in it to destroy this boat. <laughs> yeah. We are putting stuff back, I yeah. promise. <laughs> all right guys, so yesterday we got all this roughed in Today we are working on fastening it all down, and as you guys already know, our kitchen, <laughs> our galley, was off level. It actually concaved to this point right here, so this side slanted down to here, 
and then this side slanted down to here. So with this new piece of plywood, we actually got it straight, we shimmed it up, and we screwed two screws in, one here and one in the back there. And as you can see, we're using the level not as an actual level, but mainly as a straight edge to test out whether it's flat or not. So this is nice and flat right there. as well as back there. So it's nice and flat. Now we can actually secure it all the way around. So we're gonna screw this plywood down into the fiberglass. We're gonna brace it right here. And we are going to basically screw all this together with L brackets and stainless steel screws. And then we're gonna do a little tabbing in here as well, just to give these kind of bulkheads a good bond to this fiberglass on the side. Today we're going to be doing some tabbing and we're actually going to be tabbing this bulkhead in as well as this one right here. The rest is pretty much screwed in and that's okay but since these are going to be pretty structural to the boat we're going to tab them into the actual hull liner of the boat. Now what I have to do is take this palm sander and sand off a bit of gel coat from the interior here and we're actually going to be tabbing the interior here as well as the back of this bulkhead and then everything else will just kind of screw to that. Now. I'm going to be testing this guy out. Randy and I bought two of these full face masks and we just transferred our 3M filters over to them and we're pretty happy with them so far. At least we've tested them out a little bit but now we're actually going to use it on a project. The cool thing about these is they provide full eye protection, face protection as well as protection for your lungs. And what I really really love about them is it actually cycles fresh air in through the filters into the mask and then into the nose cup. And what that does is since you're constantly cycling in fresh air into the mask, this mask tends not to fog. I tested it out the other day on a really hot and humid day, certainly a day that a normal goggle would fog very, very quickly, and these guys didn't fog. We just really weren't happy with our goggles. We've been wearing them for a lot of things, and we were still getting stuff like in the sides, into our eyes, so we figured we'd go all out. All right guys, so this is what it looks like right now. These are the areas that we took the gel coat down to the bare fiberglass. As you can see, we didn't do a ton of sanding, but I think this will suffice for this job. It's still dusty in here, so I don't want to take this off, but dust is a big issue for us because we're living in this boat. So I don't want to do a crazy amount of sanding and stir up a crazy amount of dust when it doesn't seem completely necessary for that. That looks good enough. I think we're gonna get a good enough bond and that along with the screws that are already in it, I think we're gonna be okay. All right guys, so I'm down in the newly created port side cockpit locker. It's pretty big down here, it's kinda cool. Uh, it's hard to show on camera, but let me show you what I'm about to do. So this is the back side of that bulkhead we just installed. So on the other side of this is the salon and actually Randy, it's right there. <laughs> but we're gonna be tapping in this side as well to the cockpit liner. We got our cutting table set up and Randy's doing a great job cutting the 10 ounce plain weave e-glass for our tabbing. I'm over here, I'm about to start mixing up some thickened epoxy so we can fill in some of the gaps and make fillets. The glass is cut. Jordan is finishing up, filling in the gaps with thickened epoxy, and then we can get started on tabbing. We're filled in on this side. Jordan's gonna go check this bulkhead on the other side to see how badly it's squeezed through. Your <laughs> My filleting skills are gonna be criticized in this episode, I can guarantee you. We're just doing two layers of the 10 ounce e-glass, nothing crazy. It's uh, basically just serving to bond it to the hull. We've got this area tabbed in, as you can see. Pretty strong, it's still not completely cured yet, but waiting on that. And now we've got this area to do. So we've got to fill, you see this gap right here because we leveled this counter. We've got to fill this gap with thickened epoxy 
we're going to add this right here, West System 404, as well as 406. Now, 406 is a thickening agent, and so is 404, but 404 supposedly has higher compressive strength because it's a high-density adhesive filler. So we're going to put both of them in the epoxy, and we're going to basically kind of caulk this joint here. We just want to fill that gap so that as people are walking on it, it doesn't sag down anymore. We're also going to be adding this right here and gluing that in as well. This is going to be a step right here, so people are going to be coming down on it with their feet right there. So this 2x4 with this piece of plywood is going to pro provide a good amount of reinforcement right there. So we took our router with our flush cut bit and we went along the edge of what will be our countertop here. The only issues that we really had were in certain areas at the end where we couldn't go all the way towards that fiberglass hole liner and then also here because the initial gap was too large and the flush cut bit isn't long enough to cover this area. Probably have to get this area with a rough cut of the jigsaw and go over it with the belt sander. So this behind me is our sink and we actually got it from Ikea. Now let's open it up and show you what it looks like. As you can see, it has one single bowl, but it has this angled area so that you can wash dishes and everything like that without having to have a gigantic sink on a sailboat. Now we were thinking about doing a big full-size kitchen sink, but the issue is the drain pipe locations. If there were to be a drain pipe on this side, it would actually go straight down into the motor, so the motor's in the way. But the drain pipe can be on this side, so this works out perfectly and it still gives us a good large area to wash dishes, right? Yeah, definitely. Having this extra surface area that's angled down into the sink gives you more workspace. You guys might have seen a video very recently where Sailing Uma put in one of these. Well, this actually was Sailing Uma's pot filler. However, it was their second pot filler. When they ordered that one that you saw in the video, they actually sent Uma out too. We commented on their video how awesome of an idea that it was, and they commented back saying, hey, we actually have two do you guys want one? Because they knew we were refitting our galley as well. And we we're like, yeah, of course, it'd be perfect for us as well. So we're going to see how we can hook this guy up. Check it out! Thank you, Ikea. Now, I'm sure you're asking, with this type of sink, especially since this is right in the middle of coming down to the companionway, what happens if someone misses the step that's gonna be right here and lands right here? This isn't very solid. Well, I had the same concern. So what I'm gonna do is put a brace underneath the counter right here. So just in case someone slips, their full weight comes down on the sink. The sink's just not gonna go and buckle and go you know, directly on top of the electric motor. That would be pretty bad. So I thought of it. We're just getting it fitted for now. And we're obviously being gonna be careful coming in and out of the boat to step right here, which is very properly braced. This is extremely solid right here, but we're gonna brace right here and probably another one right here underneath. You also might be wondering, why an Ikea sink? Well, this is a stainless steel sink, and although the quality probably isn't marine grade, and it probably will rust at some point if we get salt water in it, but this is gonna be kind of like a test. This sink was only $80 at Ikea, so if it rusts in about a year or two and it lasts that long, well, we can just order another one from Ikea and it basically would have served its purpose. You can see that there's no real room for a faucet here. And so we were trying to figure out if we could do like one at an angle over here or if we needed to go through here, but there's foam under it. And it was literally like the next day that Sailing Uma put up their video with this in it. And we're like, that is so perfect because then we don't have to worry about all that space. It's just gonna be able to fold right back under the companion way, no one's gonna step on it because you can't step through this area. So it was just the perfect solution. I've got it right.